Remember there's a close relationship between energy and matter. That would include energy and matter of either flavor, dark or luminous. Remember, we can use E equals MC squared to convert between the two. So how much dark energy might there be within our solar system in units of mass? Cosmologists estimate that if you took all the space within the orbit of Neptune, that would correspond to about six tons of dark energy. Er, six tons spread over the whole solar system isn't much. Thus, in our solar system, there's far more matter than dark energy, so space holds together. But as you well know by now, the amount of space in the universe is, well, astronomical. Add up all that space in the observable universe, and the amount of dark energy far outweighs the amount of matter. Current estimates are that the universe is made of about 68% dark energy, about 27% dark matter, and a mere 5% normal matter. Hmm. Better to call it luminous matter. For if the occurrence of normal matter is only 5%, then that's hardly normal on a universal scale, at least. Let's look at this in a pie chart. Of that 5%, we see most of it is free hydrogen and helium. The elements that make us, such as carbon and heavier elements, are really, really rare. So here's an interesting question. What might be the ultimate fate of our universe? It expanded from this big bang. What then? Will it continue to expand forever? Will the force of gravity ultimately pull everything back together in a big crunch? Matter, be it dark or luminous, is attractive. Dark energy, however, is repulsive. So, who wins? And guess what we keep getting more of? The distribution within this chart isn't static. Billions of years from now, the percentage of matter will be even less as dark energy grows. The thinking of most cosmologists today, therefore, is the universe is set to continue expanding for eternity. Within that framework, though, there are still a number of possible scenarios. They include heat death, the big rip, and eternal inflation. With heat death, all matter basically thins itself out of existence. Right now we're privileged to see galaxies all around us ever so distant. As space expands, the number of galaxies visible to us drops. Eventually, after, say, a hundred billion years, the only galaxies visible would be those within your own supercluster, the galaxies of which would have merged via galactic collisions. And all that remains is an island of stars surrounded by an apparently infinite void. After a hundred trillion years, stars will have exhausted their fuel and your universe will be fully dark. Endure that 100 trillion years for a hundred more times, which would be a total of uh, 10 quadrillion years, 10 to the 16th. Matter within each supercluster would be either disorganized from random collisions and or have fallen into supermassive black holes after 10 to the 40th years. All protons and neutrons will have decayed, leaving behind gamma rays and leptons, of which the electrons are an example. So by 10 to the 100 years, a Google, the universe is nothing more than a collection of supermassive black holes but after about 10 to the 150 years, even these black holes will have evaporated, leaving behind low-energy photons that get stretched to the lowest energy states possible. Entropy will have one supreme victory. But if the influence of dark energy grows even stronger over time, we might end up with a runaway positive feedback loop called the Big Rip, which would be reminiscent of cosmic inflation. In that case, not even superclusters will be held together. Neighboring galaxies would fly apart. The stars within a galaxy would then be hurled away from each other as, as would planets, 
which would basically rip apart, followed by atoms themselves, followed by their subatomic particles. Everything just scattered in an exponential moment. Time frames for this big rip would be much shorter than that with heat death. Say, a mere 35 billion years after the Big Bang. Of course, the universe already being about 14 billion years old, that would leave us about 21 billion years to go. But if the universe is actually infinite in size, or should we say infinite in its capacity, then you need to understand that what happens in one patch of the universe is not necessarily the same as what happens in another patch. While one region undergoes heat death or the big rip, another region might be undergoing a new epoch of growth. Recall from our discussions on cosmic inflation, it might be that the Big Bang is less like a firework and more like a fire hose, spewing out matter-filled observable universes within every instant on a perpetual basis. This scenario is known as eternal inflation. With eternal inflation, the ultimate fate of our own observable universe is not the same as that of the universe as a whole. Heat death, the big rip, eternal inflation, these are certainly speculations. But they're speculations founded upon solid understandings. How did we get to these solid understandings? For example, how did we get to know that the universe is organized by galaxies within galactic clusters? We once speculated the stars to be bound within a celestial sphere high in the sky. Looking through telescopes, we found otherwise. And that's the key, isn't it? Lifting our heads and looking, listening, using our senses with an open mind. Only then can we make sense of the universe, not for what we might wish it to be, but for what it actually is, more astounding than anything we could have possibly imagined with our eyes closed. Stay tuned. There's more to come. And thanks for listening. Good science to you.